Hi and welcome to my OCRA A-Level Biology Revision Session with me Christine. So today's lesson I want to look at the LAC operon which is part of your Module 6 Cellular Control Topic Area. So let's just remind ourselves about lactose. Lactose is a disaccharide that's made up of glucose and galactose. If we have water and that water is available then lactose can actually be hydrolyzed to release the monomers glucose and galactose. Now glucose is the respiratory substrate of choice for most organisms and if they require to utilize other respiratory substrates they will need to hydrolyze them down first. So when we look at the lacoperon then what we need to understand is the lacoperon is a way in which E. coli, a prokaryote, actually regulates its gene expression. Now there are different levels of regulation of the gene expression and this one we're going to look at is known as the transcriptional level. Now the transcriptional level is where the genes can be turned on, i.e. the gene can be transcribed, or the gene can be turned off, it can be inhibited. Now, the LAC operon, how this works is that it's an operon, a cluster of genes which are under the control of a promoter. And the promoter is a region of the DNA that is upstream of those structural genes and it is going to control the expression of these structural genes. Basically, it's the site that RNA polymerase is going to bind to and then the RNA polymerase will build downstream from the promoter. So what do we have then? Well, we have this gene which is called a LACZ gene. Now, what that does is that when it is transcribed and then translated will result in a protein being produced, which is known as beta-galactosidase. This is an enzyme that's going to hydrolyze lactose. Remember, lactose, the disaccharide, with, we're using an enzyme, we're going to catalyze the reaction. It a faster rate is a biological catalyst. So by producing this protein, it means the lactose can be broken down faster. We have a LACY. Now LACY gene results in the transcription and then translation of lactose permease. Now lactose permease is a protein that's going to make the cell permeable to lactose. Lactose is a disaccharide, it's a large molecule, it's not able to get across that phospholipid bilayer because it's too large, therefore it needs a help in hand, it needs a protein to make it more permeable. And the last one is LAC-A, so this is known as a transacetylase. Now this is an enzyme that's going to remove the acetyl group from the galactose, making it an intermediate substrate which can be utilized in respiration. So these three structural genes, LACZ, LACY and LACA, are all under the control of that promoter region. Now what we also have, because we're talking about the regulation of this gene expression, is we have what's known as a regulatory gene which is further along the DNA molecule. Now this regulatory gene, LACI, codes for a repressor protein. Now that repressor protein has a very specific shape which means that it will bind to the operator. And when it binds to the operator, what that does is that will actually block RNA polymerase from being able to bind. That therefore stops transcription of those three structural genes. Therefore, it is regulating the expression of these genes. So if there is no lactose present, and there is glucose present, glucose will be the respiratory substrate of choice. That is because it takes energy to be able to build the proteins needed to hydrolyze the lactose, to make the cell permeable, and to be able to remove the acetyl group from the galactose. So they're very energy demanding processes. So there's no point in wasting energy building these proteins if they're not required. Well, if the glucose levels drops to a level that is low enough, then actually the 
bacterial cell, the E. coli, still needs to be able to do respiration. Therefore, it needs to hydrolyze the lactose down. And so what happens is when lactose is present, the lactose is going to bind to the repressor protein. That is going to change its 3D shape, its tertiary structure, so it cannot bind to the operator. If the repressor protein cannot bind, that RNA polymerase is now able to bind at the promoter region. It will now be able to move along and transcribe the structural genes building in that five to three direction, building those phosphodiester bonds so that we now have the pre-mRNA, which can then be translated into those three proteins. So I hope you've liked this video, and if you have, then please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, do check out my revision platform, www.aiqchat.com.